part of being an effective editor is being an efficient editor. And so I think it's important to find pain points in your editing process and find solutions for those. Now, if you've shot with the R6 or R5 before, you would know the biggest pain point of this camera is the H.265 codec that it shoots with. Now, this isn't just a Canon problem. Sony's new A7S III and A7 IV also shoot in the super compressed H.265 format, and computers just don't like this format. So about a month ago, I kind of went down a rabbit hole trying to figure out how to solve editing H.265, and I think I've come up with a solution. Now this isn't like a, a hack, like a download a program and magically H.265 footage edits with a breeze. This is uh, gonna actually require you to spend a little bit of money. But I think if you're a content creator, uh, this is a worthwhile investment. So like I said, about a month ago, I set out to try to edit H.265 footage more fluently to help really alleviate that pain point in my editing workflow. And so I started by buying more RAM. So the system that I used to edit on had 16 gigs. So I went and purchased 64 gigs of RAM, threw it in the system and saw almost no difference. In Premiere Pro, you can see how many frames are dropped in a playback. So I took a project, uh, it's about a four minute project and played it back through with 16 gigs of RAM. And I dropped somewhere between 725 ish frames. So then that was at 16 gigs of RAM. I added in 64, uh, the playback didn't really get any better. And I only dropped 710 frames. So it was only like a 15 frame difference between 16 gigs and 64 gigs. So obviously that wasn't the issue. So next I, moved all of my footage to a complete SSD workflow. My OS is on an NVMe drive, and then I had my footage on a four terabyte hard drive. So what I did was get an SSD so that my project, Premiere, and my scratch disk was all on an SSD workflow. And this helped a little bit. Um, I think we went from 710 dropped frames to like 690. We saved another like 20 frames, but we're still dropping 600 frames in a project that's only like four minutes long. And so I started doing even more research and I found out that Intel's 12th gen Alder Lake has integrated H.265 decoders. And so a couple weeks ago, I sold off all of my uh, AMD Ryzen processor, motherboard, RAM, everything like that. And I purchased an Intel i5 12600K, a ASUS ProArt motherboard and 32 gigs of 3200 megahertz RAM. And this has made a massive difference in how I edit and how my computer handles H.265. And so before we jump into Premiere Pro and I'll show you just what the editing performance is like on the new Intel 12th gen, I wanted to run a few benchmarks just to see how much uh, better the new system is from the older system. So I used Puget Systems uh, Adobe Benchmarks and ran those on my Ryzen 1700X and ran those again on my Intel uh, 12600K and a few of the results are quite surprising. Now first up we have Premiere Pro. So my Ryzen 1700X system scored a 437 and then on my Intel i5 12600K we scored a 731. Next we move to After Effects. I scored a 477 with the Ryzen 1700X and 920 with the Intel 12600K. So you're looking at almost a 200% gain again. In Lightroom, we scored 616 on the Ryzen 1700X and over 1006 on the Intel 12600K. So a big bump in Lightroom performance. And then the biggest jump was in Photoshop. With the Ryzen 1700X, we scored 488. And then on the Intel, we have a score of 1,123. So a massive bump in performance for Photoshop. And now these are all benchmarks that you can run on your own. So if you go to Puget Systems website, you can download the benchmarks and run them for free. And if you do do that, leave a comment down below. I'd like to, to see kind of what scores you're getting and how that compares to my system. But without further ado, let's jump into Premiere and I'll show you the performance that we're getting out of the 12600K. All right, so here we are in Premiere Pro 
and I have three different sequences set up. So we have the R6 test footage, S-Log3 footage shot with the A7S3, and then we have R3D footage here. So this is red Komodo 6K footage. And if we start with the uh, Canon R6, um, you'll notice right here, so the playback is just scrubbing through is buttery smooth. And if anybody has ever uh, edited R6 footage, you know to get playback speeds like this and scrubbing speeds like this is, is really difficult. And when you hit play, it instantly starts playing. And then if we look at our GPU, you can see here the video decodes on the uh, Intel 12th gen is doing a lot of the heavy lifting, lifting here. So it's um, handling the playback and these spikes here that you see is whenever you are scrubbing through footage, um, you'll kind of see these spikes. So that is the Intel GPU doing the heavy lifting. And now if we look at, um, so this is 120 frame footage, um, slowed down to 24 frames. Again, just super smooth playback speed here. Uh, again, that's the Intel 12th gen um, doing the video decode because this is H.265. So uh, we are at full resolution playback. So this is 4K, 120 frames playing back. This is um, 4K, 60 frames. So again, like anywhere you, you click, as soon as you hit play, it starts playing. Uh, just this responsiveness is, is something that you're not used to whenever you're editing R6 or R5 footage. And then the, the last footage is, so I think a bit, a bit of a misnomer is people think that red footage because of it being raw and being 6K is actually very difficult to play back. But if you look at this, this actually has the smoothest scrubbing out of all of it. And that is because red footage is very well optimized. And it, instead of using the Intel GPU, it actually uses the much more powerful GTX 1070. So this is um, graphically accelerated playback. And so you can see here is my 1070 is doing a ton of heavy lifting. You can actually hear it kind of in the background whirling away. Um, but that's what causes red footage to be so easy to edit and so this is 6k footage and you can just rip through it um, but in contrast now the r6 footage is i would say it's not as fast as going through red but having the ability to decode has just really um you can see here so the intel GPU here, having the ability to decode R6 footage on the fly is really a game changer and something that's going to help um, with pretty much all editing scenarios going forward. But I thought this was just a cool little demo to show you how it does work with Canon A7 III footage. Uh, RED footage is already GPU accelerated, has been for a very long time. And now we finally have smooth playback on Canon R6 footage, and this would also be uh, Canon R5 footage as well. Now, I hope you guys have found this video helpful. If you're like me, this past year trying to edit H.265 footage has just been a massive headache, and the Intel 12600K has really um, kind of helped speed up my workflow. And I think going forward, it's going to be a massive benefit to just making these kind of videos because I don't have to dread the edit process as much. I know Apple has just released the new Mac Studio and those also have H.265 decoding along with a lot of other stuff. And so it might be a cool video to do a comparison between that and this. So uh, if you're interested in seeing a video like that, let me know down below and I will try to get my hands on the new Mac Studio and we can do that comparison. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.